Welcome back to Otaku No Video, as always thank you very much for joining me, where I'm here talking about a review of Bubblegum Crash, a sequel to the extremely popular Bubblegum Crisis anime series from the late 1980s. Uh, and I say that because, you know, if you're getting into Bubblegum Crisis, you should probably start with, or if you're getting into this, you should probably start with Bubblegum Crisis, not with Crash. Um, but, just in case, uh, you can watch Bubblegum Crash. It is only three episodes, as opposed to the original, which is longer. Uh, Crash was made in 1991 by AIC, the same studio that made the original series. Uh, and it's set in a near-future world where androids called boomers have become just ubiquitous. They're everywhere. Uh, unfortunately, they're also going rogue uh, at an alarming rate. But the company that makes them, uh, Genom, is basically hushing up this fact. So these four women all get together in this group called the Night Sabers, and they, they don what are called hard suits, hard suits, which are basically personal mecha, you know, sort of body armor, uh, and go out and, and fight these boomers when they go rogue. That's the basic um, setup and basically how the stories go along. Uh, and uh, um, so start off with the animation. Um, clearly, Bubblegum Crash has a higher than normal budget. Um, about the same as the original Bubblegum Crisis OVA, which had a pretty high budget by anime at the time, I would say. Uh, it is a pretty typical 1990s or early 90s anime style uh, to the art, though. So if you're not a big fan of that late 80s, early 90s style, this probably you know, won't change your mind. Uh, that said, the animation is technically excellent. I mean, everything is rendered in loving detail almost to the point of sort of a mecha fetishization, if you will, and I don't mean that sexually, just in the sense that, you know, when you, there's a lot of shots of gears meshing and android muscles flexing and things like that in ways that are just very lovingly rendered, which is very appropriate for a series like this, which is very much about, um, uh, you know, a society in which mechanization is becoming uh, just a commonplace in every day, not just something in the factory, but now just something part of everyday life. The direction overall is not spectacular and not remarkable, but very clear. You know, it's, it's always, you know, I, I could always very much tell what was going on. Uh, you know, nothing muddied there. Um, and it just, you know, it, it, it worked just fine, much like a lot of, of anime works at the time. You know, absolutely fine, but you're not going to turn anyone on or off uh, of anime uh, probably from this one. But it does have that kind of 90s feel. Now, we get to the characters, and this is the, gets, gets to one of the, the big problems I have, um, um, particularly relating to the story itself. So, Bubblegum Crash commits what I call the return to Oz fallacy, or the return to Oz problem. Namely, you know, you have this beloved world and set of characters, and you return to it that fi to find that everything is kind of falling apart, and you know, the characters are all split up, and then they all have to get back together again, so to the end they can kick butt the way they used to in, in the first one. This is the plot of Hook, it's the plot of Return to Oz, it's the plot of many other uh, uh, you know, movies like that that usually fail at the box office. Because, after I've watched that original, I don't want to come back to watch the character, you know, and in the original the characters are awesome, I don't want to come back to them being not awesome and spend a whole nother series waiting for them to become awesome again. That's really frustrating. So that's what Bubblegum uh, Crash does. At the beginning, without getting into spoilers, the characters are just not really into their, their job anymore. They're just really, you know, uh, not excited about being the, the night sabers anymore. They're not going to fall apart, you know, immediately, but it's just, you know, the spark is gone. So there's this whole big question. And it's not really until the end of the, the last episode that they really start getting back together. Uh, they, they, they really start, you know, fighting as, as a, as a full-scale team. I guess the end of the second episode. Still, it, it's just it's frustrating to spend over half of the series with the characters sort of all split up and, and just not really, you know, uh, together. Particularly, this is one thing I don't understand, is the character of Pris. Um, Pris is this hard-edged rocker, uh, very dedicated to, uh, to, to destroying boomers. She hates boomers. Um, and at the beginning of the series, she's... Um, still pursuing her rock career, and she's like this giddy, giggly girl all of a sudden, and she's really happy about the, the direction of her, you know, her recording career. And it's just not the way Pris has ever been in this series, and she goes back to being the way she was before later on in the series. 
But just early on, it's like, who is this person? It doesn't fit with her character. There's no reason for her to be that way precisely. And it's just this really strange shock. Now, I know one of the reasons they were doing that is because the, the voice actress who played her character had already explored this, uh, this, this pop music career. So it was kind of a joke on that, but the problem is, you know, they carried the joke so far that it just didn't fit with the actual character herself of Pris. So that was kind of confusing. Plus, there's this whole problem of, of spending a lot of time with the characters not being awesome, which is just really frustrating. You also have the problem that the, the plot is a pretty standard late 80s, early 90s action movie plot. You know, there's a villain, and they have to fight, and there's a, there's a bit of a mystery, which is then resolved. You know, nothing surprising here. Um, you know, at least in terms of, of, of the bad guy. Although I will say uh, two things. One is that it does explore some elements from the original Bubblegum uh, Crisis series. So you, you do get some, some callbacks, if you will. Secondly, there's a character here who's basically a next generation boomer uh, that interacts with, with, uh, with the characters. And that sequence actually does delve into and deal with some of these themes of Bubblegum Crisis uh, the franchise in general has in terms of, again, just how do we live and what does it mean for us to be humans when we're surrounded by, by, by beings that are approaching our level of intelligence? What does that mean for humanity? So I did appreciate that and I thought that was a, a, a useful and helpful uh, element. But that was really the only thing that, that leapt out at me. You know, animation, excellent, but eh. Now the voices overall, perfectly fine. The English dub is a pretty typical 90s anime dub. Uh, you know, cheesy at times, but effective if you're used to English dubs, you know, no problems. Uh, and the Japanese dub is certainly perfectly good as, as well. But overall, I was just, I was kind of overwhelmed by the fact that I was just sitting through all this stuff of the characters kind of getting back into the swing of things. Not, you know, not the right direction to take, especially when the storyline itself is just kind of blah overall. So... Sorry, those are my thoughts. If you want to check out Bubblegum Crash, head over to streamsuki.com, see if it's streaming legally somewhere. It's a site I run. And then um, uh, if you want to talk about interesting anime series, stop on by otakunovideo.net. Our forums are a good place to talk about interesting anime and manga. So thanks for watching, and um, I hope you find something that interests you more than Bubblegum Crash interested me. Oh, well. In a bathhouse?